Oh, hello, hello. Welcome in, everybody. Let's see, we got Zadanim, Artisynth, Solar Labyrinth, Cubis, That Gamer, The Big Brain, Hi Yag, Dunkle Growl, Spoo Streams, and Fox Shadow. So in, there are a couple of different things. I mean, the, the topic of me... It, I forgot to do my, my warm-ups. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. I kind of want to go over, like, you know, check out some of the non-traditional things, like things made in Godot that aren't necessarily games, but are still, still awesome. That gamer, I got some bad news for you, my friend. Bad news. I don't think you're first. Oh, crap. Hold on one second. thought that I had turned that off. My apologies. That's for my own stream. I have a lot of stuff going on for, for when I stream, so forgive me for forgetting to turn off one or two other things. Um, but yeah, I wanted to kind of check out some of the things that, that have been built in Godot that aren't necessarily Godot or aren't necessarily games. Uh, so a little bit about me, for those of you who don't know me. Uh, I'm JD. I'm glad we had that talk. All right, so let's... Uh, um, normally, I'm a web developer. I work primarily in PHP, JavaScript, Drupal, things like that. Um, but uh, I got laid off last year and went through a few months of, you know, being unemployed. And I chose, instead of curling up into a little ball of sadness, well, sorry, a big ball of sadness, I decided that um, I wanted to learn something. I wanted to try something new. I wanted to, to do something new. And I this was around the time of when there were issues with other engines and pricing models. Um, so I decided to go with Godot. And part of that is because I absolutely love open source software. I love open source community. I love everything about it. Um, so I, I started picking it up, started making, doing a couple tutorials and things went really well. I, I love it. Absolutely love it. A couple months later, I got a job. A couple months later, lost that job. And so I dove back into game dev um full time and again it it saved me because i was going through some really really tough uh tough times but having something to to work on and something to strive for uh kind of helped out so my main game if you don't mind me showing off the main game that i'm working on um it's slow going slower now that i do have a job again um it's called city's revenge There is a, a dev bubble. I, I think it's more of an AI bubble. Um, that, that's a whole conversation. Um, but yeah, there, there's a lot of questions right now. So I'm, I'm fortunate. I, I did find a job. I'm still in the, 
in the uh, Drupal community and working very hard with them. But yeah, okay, let's let's take a look here if if it loads up. So I started on this when I had very little, very little idea of what I was doing. I'd done a few tutorials. I'm telling you all this um, because please forgive me for some how bad and how slow some of the things are running. I need to optimize. I, I was learning 3D modeling at the same time. Oh, Cleekly, welcome in. Also, forgot to say hi. Um, Elf Adventure, how you doing? It is 3D. It is definitely 3D. And this game was inspired by another streamer who is also a podcast host. Temptic404, welcome in. It's great to see you. Thank you for being here. Who made an off-the-cuff comment about a, a Smoky Bear commercial that was absolutely terrifying. Um, I don't want to play any YouTube videos on here. Uh, I don't think that it, it would be DCM, DCMA, but hey, Goob, what's up? Welcome in. But I don't want to, you know, risk anything. But the, the video was a, a woman in the 70s talking, and then she leans down and pulls off her face to reveal Smokey Bear underneath. And the the streamer I was watching, also a podcast host, said, why hasn't somebody made a game using you know, with, with this kind of idea? And I thought, that is a dang good idea. And kind of went from there. So, this is our bear sooty. He's distinct. He's legally distinct from that other one, that Smokey Bear. And in several ways. For one, Smokey has a big floppy hat with his name on it. Sooty's hat just has a no fire. Smokey has a big, big uh, belt buckle with his name on it. Sooty has a belt, no buckle. And Smokey's snout is, is a lighter color around the face. And, and Sooty wants to murder you. Those are the key differences. So I'm using a few different things here. I'm using Terrain 3D. I'm using Proton Scatter uh, for the map. And built this map out. Oh, you don't want to. You don't want to. You don't want to pet him. Legally distinct. Legally distinct. So let's see. I, I was testing some things out last I was working on it. I don't know if I have everything set up, but I'll, I'll show just a teeny bit of the gameplay. All right, so you start off in the woods. All you've got is a flashlight. Pay no attention to the key here because um, we have changed that out for, for papers that are journal pages that get hidden throughout the level. And to find the journal pages, you have to start a fire. Look, there's one. I don't have the picking up part yet. Oh, and the battery's running low. So as the fire gets turned on, Yag, you're not far off. Thank you, Solar. As the fire gets turned on, our bear gets aggroed and starts coming towards the fire to put it out. So I'm going to run away for a moment. And what you can't see is there is a battery indicator. Oh, shit. Sorry. I didn't expect him to come from that way. So basically, if he catches you, you die. Um, Zadonim, you're not wrong. You are not wrong. 
so yeah so i've got a couple a couple more mechanics that i'm i'm going to be adding into it um to escape the level each level you have to find journal pages right the whole lore behind it is that you are your friend was a camp ranger or a, a park ranger at a national park an unnamed well i think i have a name for it i just can't remember it but an unnamed natural national park and your friend went missing supposed to be back after an eight day or a seven day rotation within the park because you know parks are big uh but never came home and nobody's doing anything about it so you decide that you're going to go into the park to to find out what happened and in the process you find some some journal pages on every level and you have to collect them to get to open a lockbox inside the cabin here that has a key so that you can get to the level exit and open that up and move on to the next so so that's the main game that i'm working on happy to answer any questions about it anything that you know people are wondering or if anybody has feedback because you know, a little bit more about me is I am relatively new to the game dev uh anything I am so honored to be doing this so honored to be a part of of this takeover um I've got a lot of development experience a lot of other experience but I'm very new to the game dev I am enjoying the heck out of it. All right, so. Let's close this down. Let's go back to the project list. I don't think I changed anything that needs to be saving. Oh, Cleekly, that is a good question. Um... Personally, I I either import data, and I don't really have it yet since I just closed down. Um, yeah, let's open it back up. Yeah, or uh, yeah, I did not make the nav mesh. Um, Terrain three D is really really good, in my opinion, uh, about doing a lot of things, including the nav mesh. So when you use Terrain 3D, um, you're basically painting a heat map on onto the or as a level. And uh, as part of that, and let me go in here. Maybe you can see Poxis, what's up? Welcome in. So I have a nav uh, nav region here. I put my terrain 3D within that. Now you can see uh, let me turn off the proton scatter and turn on the light. So there is a, a paint brush here for navigation. And you can see it paints it purple, but you can see that it's everywhere that I painted becomes part of the nav mesh and anything that's within the nav region gets picked up on it. And so that works out really well for the bear. Um, I would like to optimize it a little bit more, but it seems to be working all right. I know that right now, right now the bear is, he needs some love. And I don't mean the romantic kind, I mean, I was learning when building him out, and I did model him. I, I made the model, for better or worse, except for the teeth. The teeth I I, I borrowed from another um, resource, but these teeth... Hey, Tommy L. Bro, what is up? Welcome in. These teeth take up more vertices than the rest of the bear. So... That's one of my priorities, but right now I'm working more on the, the function, then we'll come back to the form 
and, and clean that up. Um, let's see, Gray Feather Nine starting to learn 3D part of Godot. Any recommended resources? Gray Feather, there are a ton of good, um, well, the docs for one. Uh, reading the docs helped me out a lot. Uh, there's also a lot of different courses that you can look into. Um, I I used one that I found on Humble Bundle a few months ago that happened to be released right around the time that I was looking to get into game dev, and that helped out a lot as well. Uh, so keep a lookout for that, uh, for those bundles, because when they drop, they're really good. Um, so that would be my recommendation for learning things. And Cleekly, how do you solve the lack of constructors like insisting a scene with parameters? So there are a, a couple uh, different ways to do it. I mean, like for instancing parameters, I do a lot of exports. And or I'll have a lot of empty vars or typed vars, like var something. It's a packed scene. So when I inst uh, instantiate the node uh, in a different scene, then I can somebody's having fun with my redeems that should be off on my channel. Captain Anosa, come on. Give me one second here. I got it now. You know, for better or for worse, the in open source, which I love, which I love. <laughs> um, there, there's a book by Eric Raymond. One of the one of the, I think it's required reading for for anybody who likes open source software or is passionate about it. Called the Cathedral and the Bazaar. And it's about how um, keeping you know, in the cathedral, you have a single person or uh, you know, a couple group, uh, a, a small group holding on to all the knowledge and they are preaching it out. Um, great Feather 9, there are a ton of great streamers too. Uh, but YouTube videos have helped me out a lot. Um, and hang out in streams and ask questions, just like you're doing now. It's great. And right now, I don't know how many people are here, but there, it, there are a ton of brilliant people here. Ooh, this will be, be even easier. Give me one second here. Now I need to pause all these things. Definitely that one. All right. So what I'll do if I'm instantiating is I'll have wherever I'm instantiating the scene, and we're just gonna say for 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 sake of argument that it's in in ready here. Then I'll do my inst scene equals some and then now that it's been instantiated you can set the uh 
Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is one of my favorite features. One of my favorite features. I had a uh, add-on for it before, but now it's just in core. Like as soon as it came into core, I'm like, that's my default. All right, let's let's undo stuff so that I don't completely break the bear any more than he's already broken. All right, good, good. Looks like we're we're back back to where we were. I don't think I made any changes here. Oh, I turned off the lights. Or tur turned on the light? Turn. Okay. Don't save. So I'm one of the... I'm the type of person who likes to see how far I I can push some things or how to use things the most wrong way possible. Dr. Revert, yes. I am using Git. I I love Git. I recommend Git. I think every developer who does any kind of code whatsoever should use Git. Whether or not you use GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab, um, or something else, that's up to you. But at least locally, you should have Git and back things up. Yeah, Dr. Revert, love the name. It's almost like you 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 jumped in here knowing we were going to talk about version control. Dr. Revert. That's going to be the name of my my startup. And the only thing we're going to do is teach people how to use Git reset hard. That's it. Sorry, itchy nose. Um, so, one thing about me as well, you know, aside from liking to get in and break stuff, yeah, you got it right. I I remember when I was uh early in my developer career. Um, like I, something happened on between the build and my local, and I don't know what to do. I know that everything's working right, and I can see that something's broken up there. Um, and my my senior dev's response was, "Use the force." Excuse me. Use the force. All right, all right, I get it. Star Wars. What are you talking about? No, get push force. Oh, okay. So as I said, I like to... <laughs> I like to to push the limits of things and see see what I can do. Um, I also, you know, you you can contribute to open source in more ways than just, um, just writing code. There's a lot of stuff. Pigorly, welcome in. Okay, everybody, quiet down. Pigorly's here. Uh, yeah, you can contribute to open source in, in more ways than, than just writing code. Documentation is huge. I did a YouTube short on this um, a while ago. And, you know, I think that if, like, if you're looking at documentation and you see something is missing, uh, fix it. Submit a, a, a PR with the documentation in it. 
you know, write up some documentation, start the conversation. I did not intend for that to rhyme, but but I'm now going to trademark it. So one of the things that I do you know, as part of the open source community, specifically Drupal, is I talk at a lot of conferences. Now I'm curious who who has been to an exciting conference talk. Um. I know there there are a lot that I've been to that have been I'm excited. Netpyum, welcome in. Welcome in with a raid. I know. Uh, what do you think, friends of the stream? Should I? Should I? I don't think I can. I don't think I can change the name from a different channel. Cat by Yum, welcome in, welcome in. Glad to see you, thank you for raiding in. Thank you, I appreciate you all coming in here, sharing this time with me. Now I have a very, very, very loud and busy raid alert on my own stream. Uh, and I, I feel bad that I can't do it here. I could, but it wouldn't have the names right unless you you'd already been on my stream while while I was live, so that streamer bot could get your name. Um, unfortunate too. It's good. It's good. Um, so yeah, I I talk at a lot of conferences. A lot of we in Drupal we call them camps. The more regional ones because there there are the the continental Drupal cons, um, you know, North America, Europe, South America, Asia. Geography, there's your lesson. Um, and I, I thought to myself, you know, how can I make things more interesting and you know, make things in a way that people want to see the talk or they're, they're interested in, you know, seeing the topic, watching the slides. And this was again uh, when I decided to write this this talk. It was early early this year. This is the first time I, I wrote it. I gave this talk in Florida, and I made the slides on stream. And now I went in with the goal of I wanted people to to see my talk and come out saying I. I didn't care if they liked what I had to say. I wanted them to have the opinion that was a cool as hell way to say it. And so that's that's what I went for. So I'll show you a little bit here. how I presented a talk with a controller. Oh, the wrong thing. Some of it is covered off to the side, but I made my slides into different screens, Mega Man style. Oh, I just did the shader last night, Nick, down at down at the bottom here. That looks a lot better than it did when when I first started on it. So the other part of this is something 
that if you've ever given a talk at a conference, at least in my opinion, that you need speaker notes. A speaker screen so that you're not, huh? Every time you want to rem remember what's what's on the scene or what's on the, the projector. So we have a second screen, a viewport of the of the main game, and with each each slide, we get new new speaker notes. Now, the people who saw this talk absolutely loved it. They were very, very interested in it. And they they had a lot of questions for me after the fact, which was great. But, and these guys don't do any damage either. So, so don't worry. I guess instead of hurting them, we, we can just write them. That's kind of cool. So, I wanted to try and improve this some, because I feel like since I made this originally, um, earlier this year, I've learned a lot, I've met a lot of people. What the hell? Captain Nosa, I did think about that. I did think about doing that. I decided not to. <laughs> I I chose. I did not choose violence that day. Where the heck did that? Where did that come from? That's odd. I don't think I have anything in here that would be. Connecting. Do I? This is this is strange. Um. Spoo strings, I I've never never heard of that one. The art of the screen shake. That is really cool. Um, let me let me note that down. The art of screen shake. Okay, there we go. Now now I, I have it in a tab. One of many tabs. Okay, so any any idea? I don't have anything that would. Okay. All right, good. Well, you know my my big fear here was. that it was you know, something inside. So I do a lot of um, integration with Godot and Twitch and StreamerBot and things like that. So my big fear, seeing something like this test one, two, three, or sad awe or 
faster, 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 faster. Um, is that I had it hooked up to to a chat, but since it showed up a second time. Yaro, welcome in. Um, so I am doing a takeover. I am JD. My my normal channel is JD Does Dev. And I am fortunate enough to be to have been invited to take over the Godot official stream for today. This whole week has been full of amazing people. And we're 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 ending the week with me. Um, so I am showing off my wait, 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 wait. Your notes. Oh no, wait. Interesting. I don't know. Okay. Blah 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 blah. So I am showing off my um platformer presentation. Captain Onosa, this week has been on fire. Uh, so already, yep, I have my, my channel, JD Does Dev. Twitch TV, JD Does Dev. And so this is a platformer presentation um, for, for those coming in and asking. It's very simple mechanics, but we're going to going to increase or we're going to try to improve it a little bit so i have this because i'm actually giving the talk again in september and i'm glad the shader turned out it doesn't look so dang static. And so I, I want to update it. I want to try to do a little bit more with it because there, I guess that's, that's kind of the, the thesis statement of, of my stream uh, today here on the Gido Engine official channel is that there's a lot you can do with the Godot that isn't just game. I mean, yes, technically this is a game. Speaking of ways to give back to open source, what Nightbot just said. Well, not that one, but what Nightbot just said. Donate to the Godot Foundation. If you can, do it. Because I know Nat told me not to say say any sponsors, but you know what, Godot, you know, is sponsored by you. The the people who use it, the people who donate to it, the people who contribute to open source, who work on the docs, work on you know, bug fixes, test out stuff. Awesome, Iara. Iarya. Iarya. I'm sorry if I'm I'm pronouncing it wrong. If if you have a, a way that you prefer I pronounce it, let me know. Aria. Okay. I saw the E E E E E. So I, I was wondering, should I be pronouncing every I? Aria. E E R Aria. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. So I'll show you the way that I have it now. Forty slides of Ridge Raider. Welcome in. Good to see you. Long time listener, first time caller. But I'm trying to think of how we can make it more, even even more entertaining. Now, obviously, I'm using Kenny assets.
And if you don't know about Kenny assets, then what are you even doing with your life? Um, Kenny is an amazing person who makes amazing free, free assets. So Arya, what I was saying before, before you hopped in is I started this and I made it when I was relatively new to game dev and I wanted to make something, make an interesting way of presenting something. Let's turn off that shader for now. Uh, but I wanted to definitely do an interesting way of presenting something. And I learned a lot along the way. I mean, we can see um, I've got quite a bit in here. I think even my, I don't call him a player, I call him the presenter. Uh, nope, I did make that one myself. Okay. And so I could, I could do where, you know, hide each one. Actually, I think that I do hide each one as, as we move. Um, I do that through signals. I believe, like I haven't actively worked on this aside from a, some shader stuff last night. I haven't really done a whole lot uh, in a while. So each of the slides is an object. Now I should have, I should have, you know, in hindsight, made a single slide object and instantiated several copies of it and then changed the attributes. Yeah, Aria, that, that's kind of what I was getting at. Um, and just as, as we have one visible, you know, if, if this is the visible scene that we're, we're on, I am left-handed, but I have a right-handed mice mouse. then have the surrounding scenes or screens also visible so that we can move in instantaneously. But as, as we move into this one, the previous offset one goes away. I think that would be a more efficient way to do it. But if we're being completely honest, efficiency isn't really my concern because I'm the only one who's ever going to be playing this, but I think that this might be an opportunity to, uh, to put together a tool that maybe somebody else would want to use. Maybe somebody else would want to, you know, load it, load in the, their own slideshow or make their own slides using it. Uh, another, I mean, so I used Google slides to make the slides themselves. And then I export every slide into a PNG. Um, now, one of the things that people love about, about PowerPoint, Google Slides, um, whatever the LibreOffice or OpenOffice version of it is, is a uh, star wipe, right? The transitions, the, the, the animations. So that was something that I had to to consider when making this. Uh, and you saw a little bit of it. Like, let's go back here. Like here, slide object two. Well, where, where is that thing? Oh, it's in the slide boundary. Okay. Um, I have a mask that covers up everything that was on the slide. So we had to get a little bit creative to make things happen. So this mask, when 
the player jumps on one of these buttons, it moves it down one length or the, the, the line height so that it takes a few different jumps to do that. So the, the audience really seemed to enjoy that uh, when I did it. But I, I, I would like to figure out a better way, better way to do this. So I, I enjoy learning with community because I think that there's something that I know that you don't. And there's something that you know that I don't. That goes for anybody in the world. Somebody is always going to know something that you don't. And you're always going to have more knowledge about something than anybody around you. Um, the, the, the problem, not even problem, the, the thing that needs to happen with that, though, is to, the willingness to share the knowledge. So I love it when, when people share knowledge and when I, I can share knowledge with them. So that was one of my main reasons for, for streaming all of my development is because I have learned so much from so many people in the Godot community that has been like welcoming with open arms, uh, just like Journey says. Uh, yeah, open arms. Can't think of the... Was, it, was that Journey? I think that's Journey. I don't know. That might be... Gonna bug me. It is, it is. Okay, yep, it is. It is journey. Sorry. Also, folks, um if you saw my my slide that's on the on the promotioning tweet. Elven Shadow Steel coming in strong with the journey quote. Yes. I so I knew it was. Um but I had faithfully stuck in my head. Um, has that ever happened to you where, where you know what song you're trying to, to hear in your head, but then you, you hear the other one? Ridiculous coding doc under my camera. So this, so already, that is a great question. Um, this add-on is made by friend of the stream and previous Godot takeover. Johnson. He took over on Monday of this week, so hopefully you caught that brilliant developer. He, he's working on ridiculous shipping, which looks absolutely amazing. It's so cool to watch what he's doing. Um, but he made this, this coding doc. And what it does is absolutely ridiculous. So I'm just going to show, you know, some things here. And it gets loud. Yes. This is what Ridiculous Coding Doc does. If you want to see more, then go to the Asset Library and download it. It is fun. I personally don't like the screen shake, so I usually turn it off. There's a, a small bug where even if it's turned off, you have to turn it on and off the next time you load it up. And sometimes the sounds could be a little bit loud, but it is fun. It's fun. It, it works great on stream. 
uh, for people who you know want to see this kind of stuff. You like noises? I do. And I actually used this, uh, used some of his code because it is MIT licensed. Uh, doesn't even need to be attributed. I think, no, I think that it does uh, need to be attributed. Um. <laughs> Tetra Valence. Kids will be far more interested when they watch me get O. Nice, nice. Um, yep, there, there are a couple different versions of it. Johnson made the first one. Uh, there is this Cupix version. Um... I don't really know what the differences are because uh, the Johnson, the OG Johnson works just fine. Not sure if there's anything slightly less ridiculous screen shaky. Okay. Um. And also big shout out to our friend Infinitani, Infinitani. Got their first plugin in the asset library today. Time Rewind 2D. Um, Arya, I'm not actually sure. Yag or mods or anybody, do you do you have an answer for that of how to submit to the asset library? I'm sure that there's a doc available. But uh, Infinitani hangs out in my stream quite a bit, streams on uh, streams as well. Just made this, or just released this, and it was actually part of a game jam um, called Mechanically Challenge, hosted by the Captain Coder, who is another amazing streamer. Hasn't been streaming much lately, been going through some, some ISP internet problems. Um... But took that and contributed it back. So not just not just part of the um you know something for it for himself, but giving back to the community. And it's amazing. So let's see. A lot of stuff that you can do in here. And uh we were looking at it on somebody else's stream earlier. Ah, Temptic, thank you, thank you. I I thought you are <laughs> you ought to know where that was. So it's so cool that this got um this got added in. I I love seeing you know people able to put things, give things back to the community and the community being being very supportive of it. Um, Temptic, I'm I'm honestly surprised you didn't just send me uh let me Google that for you link. <laughs> I mean, I could, but I I was too busy looking up the lyrics to Open Arms versus Faithfully. Elbon, um, there is there are two different pages or two different options. One is in well, three, three if you want to get technical, if you want to get nasty with it. Um, two of them are in engine where there's the asset lib tab up at the top. Um, there's also if you start a new project, you can start a new one from the asset library, and then there is also.
the Godot Asset Library, which is at godotengine.org slash asset library plus asset. And this has everything because there are some that are templates, some that are tools, and some some that are, are to be demoed. So like that's the difference between the the ones in engine. Like once you started a project, these can all be added into an existing project. But if we go to the project list here, and I go to the asset library here, all of these are to start projects with from scratch. Like as you can see, Kenny has more stuff, more stuff, and more stuff. That's all amazing. 3D platformer. Let's 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 start one with Kenny stuff. Everything CC0. That's what I love about open source and in, in this 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 community in general. And I'm sure that Kenny does it for other engines. Um That was interesting. But I mean, look at this. Kenny basically gave us a game that you could reskin, you could recolor. Hell, if you wanted to, you could take this. Is he farting? This, this, this little guy tooting? What's going on under there? Oh. Here, here, buddy. I'll, I'll get you some Beano. Um, <laughs> um, but you, if you wanted to, just with the license that that Kenny puts on this, you could package this up and put it on Steam as is. And I wouldn't, because people would laugh at you, and you'd be spending a hundred dollars to get a Steam page for for nothing. But you could. I'm not going to judge. Hey, Pandon, how's it going? Welcome in. All right, back to project list. We're going to open up the presentation here. Actually, folks, I am going to take a quick break. It's been about an hour since I started. Um. Oh, Elbin. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So in that, that's, I mean, open source is in my blood. I mean, I've been working in open source for, for over 10 years. And so when I found out that Godot was a thing and that it's completely open source and that it's made by the community for the community, for the community, like, yes, this is the engine I want to get into. Now, does it have some, some pitfalls? Yes, but everything will, everything is going to, but I, I was mentioning earlier about the cathedral, the bazaar. I think I got a little bit sidetracked, went off in on a tangent. Just like my tangent that I'm going off on now before saying that I had to go go to the bathroom. But so Eric Raymond wrote this book. I don't remember what or how how long ago, but it was quite a while ago. The Cathedral and the Bazaar, where the cathedral is where you have a small group holding all the knowledge, preaching out to 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 everybody. So only those people holding the knowledge can um can see what the problems are, what the what issues are, how to improve it, how to test it, things like that. Whereas the bazaar, not as in the re strange and unusual, but the bazaar as in like a, a flea market or a bazaar in market open mall type thing. Uh, 
where everybody is just there and they're doing their things and they're all contributing in some way, you know, to to the to the overall whole. And it, it kind of boiled down to with Linus's law, with enough eyes, all bugs are shallow. And so with the bizarre, everybody contributing, everybody giving back, everybody benefiting is kind of how that is. And that that's what I love about it. It's a rising tide, raising all ships is what open source does. Um, all right. I do need to run to the bathroom, so I am going to do that. I will be back in just a couple minutes, if even that long. So please hang out. Think of some questions, and then we're going to work on making this thing a little bit more juicy, maybe. Okay, back. Did you miss me? I missed you. All right, so where were we? I I think we were here. I'm using the slide cam. All right, this is where I'm doing all the stuff to change between the, the slides. I do want to clean some things up here while we're doing that. So 
obviously you can tell I use the default node 2D or the default script. And then world. Why do I have a signal? Ha ha ha. I don't know. Um. Now let's look at it. Now we can we can do whatever we want here. Um, Pandan, it should just work after you install it. Just go into your project settings, plugins, and turn it on. Oh, that's right. Here we go. Smooth out level slides. I don't really know what I meant by that. Um, I guess we can clean up the tiles a little bit. So part of me is like, was thinking, hmm, how can we, how can we really go all in on, on making this like extremely juicy uh it, i did update it last night because i was afraid that i'd mess something up on stream more than usual um and updated the 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 tile map that i had into tile map layers which is great i think that's amazing uh that we have that So one thing I am not strong at, well, there's many things I'm not, I'm not strong with. Um, I'm learning, learning little by little. And that's, that's what we do every day. We learn something if you can. And I'm a big, big fan, big proponent of, of allowing, allowing myself to, or trying <laughs> easier said than done, trying to allow myself to fail. Right. Because if I fail at something, it means I'm learning something and I'm growing. So I am not great at level design. I would like to, you know, I, I don't want to have it so that, you know, my, my presenter character, you know, this happy little dude, um, put it behind there. Uh, can die and have to restart all the way back at the beginning <laughs> and, have, and speed run my presentation when I'm giving it next week or not next week, two weeks from now. Um, I would make like to make it look more interesting because right now, I mean, like, like I showed earlier, I did, did some things here to make different levels, you know, using different, different assets from Kenny. But I think there's a lot that we could do. Dragon Spirit, welcome in. It's good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Just one second, need to respond to a, te uh, a message. Um, so I'm, I'm open to feedback on this. I had one. Nikore Sama. Welcome in Dragon Spirit. I'm so sorry to hear that. Take care of yourself. Yurdu Alun, welcome in. 
hello to you as well. Nikora Sama, welcome. I'm doing all right. How about yourselves? Welcome to the Godot Engine official stream. I'm JD. I am taking over for today. I will be your your um. I don't even know. Um, your taker overer. Hopefully your stream went well. You're working on something cool. Uh, today I'm we're we're talking about using Godot for things other than just for games. So I I have a presentation that I've been doing that I've done once or twice. Um that is made in Godot, and it is a PowerPoint presentation that I have imported into Godot. So there, there are a lot of opportunities here for, for improvement. I think, you know, and we were talking earlier about having the slides next to each other, or not next to each other, but loading in. I think the way that I drew it was, you know, we have one slide, the slide that the player is on, And then the previous slide is loaded and the next slide is loaded. However, however, I think the problem with that is that I have the tile map. I want to make sure that it's it's fully cohesive. Um, Dragon Spirit, we... I have not shamed that other engine at all in the stream. And and I'm not going to. Oh cool, I didn't realize I could do that. Um Sorry, I I found a new toy and it it took my attention. So, yeah, the problem with doing it like that where where this one is loaded this one's loaded, the one that we're on is loaded, but the, the following one isn't. And then, you know, cue free on the previous, once we go to the next slide, and then load the one after that. I don't think that'll work because I wanna make sure that the tiles are the way that they are, the way that they are and that they are Munglo, welcome in, and that they, they remain consistent. Now we could, on each of these, let me get out of that. Um, Actually, before I do that, before I do that, and you know, we had an interesting, or not interesting, but a good conversation about this earlier. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna. Commit our changes here. And now we can save it as its own scene. So each each level would then need an instance of the tile map. And we'd have to um make sure that it lines up perfectly with the with the uh width of the map so that would be something like you know measuring out all right negative 960 960 come on just get 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 in there there. So 
So yeah, 1080 by seven or 1080 by 1920 or 1920 by 1080, whatever. Um, and the the tile map here. Each of the tiles are are not that. Um, they're eighteen by eighteen, so we'd have to resize the the slides to match this because since it's pixel art, you want the pixels to be the pixels. So, just some quick math. Um. Okay, that's 16. Oh, I guess it does add up. I'll be damned. Um, or it does come out equal. So then that's more of an issue. Well, it's a complete skill issue. Uh, But I guess I could could move it. A little bit that way. Down a little bit and make it add up there or or Hunter DK, welcome and good to see you. Hope you're doing well. I have never tried. 1920, you're right, you're right. Oh, good, good. That one doesn't come. But that's not the one that I'm worried about. Um, As much as the 1080. At least any welcome in. Yeah, so I mean, I, I guess this is a game, but this is more than more than a game. It is a a presentation. So let me back up a little bit here, and here I'll show. I'll show for for anybody new coming in. I'll show you what I'm working on here. Oh, we're gonna we're we're definitely gonna explore some of those. What what did I what have I done? Oh, I think I know what I did. I think. Um, and friends, this is why we get. All right, uh, so I, it might have been something in a presenter here, I think. Oh, oh, crap. That's what I did. Um, But, Pelly Zenny, I will show you. I, I do have a list of other software that I'd like to go, that I'd like to, you know, show off. That I didn't make, but but some some really, really, really cool stuff. Um. But this one, okay, yeah, I fixed the the thingy. So this is my my platformer presentation. You know, instead of animation in in, in slides like on PowerPoint, we use different parts 
or different things to to do our own animations. And pro uh, progress through. Boom. The next next slides. Now, the other part of it is the the um the speaker notes. I love this. I'm What will happen if you walk out from your head to the left? Go back. So already that that is a great question. So what I would like to do, what I think would be really cool, is to find a way to not nece not necessarily automate this, but maybe instead of the way I did it, which you know exporting all the all the things as um all the slides as PNGs from Google, and then just kind of tiling over them and I think that I've got a, a slide coming up yeah like this one this one I just put a an animation on on a mask and let me go back to the the big one here so it's a little bit clear to see that when I got into a a certain part of this then it just started going down So we could, yeah, we could do text boxes. Um, but I was thinking that maybe there's a way to to make make an app out of this. Um, maybe you know ha have an interface where you upload or not upload, but you you choose an image or a background or something. Maybe place labels. Um, maybe not. Uh, it's, I haven't figured that part out. I haven't really thought that far ahead about it, but where each slide then becomes a resource or, or something similar that you could move around and then generate levels on top of. I don't know how that would work though. I'm very, it, it, it might be a project for, for after I finish up with Sooty. But it is something that I'm very, very interested in. Seeing if there is a way that we could automate it or, or you know, make things improve. Now, some of the later um, levels, screens, slides, I got kind of lazy with. So let's stop that. Uh, but I think I I would personally probably use signals, but that that's a I mean, without knowing context. Uh, that's a hard question to answer. I'm also not the most most knowledgeable person. So chat, if there's anybody who Okay, with that my my just off the cuff thought and chat again. We got some brilliant people here much, much smarter than me. That's why I love having all of you around. Um, my thought, just, just, you know, brainstorming, solutioning without remembering how I did it last time is each, each coin 
depending on how you have it, has an area 2D. And on on body entered on the character, on, on the, 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 the player character, check to see if it's a coin. If it is, then um, body Q free plus equal score. So already exactly exactly or it could go the other way um with group or with the with i guess depending on if you have an area 2d or a um which you really would i i don't know i'm rambling here but yeah like i said we've got brilliant people in chat here that could type out better than i can make words Um, I mean, if you really want to get fancy with it, you could have the, the counter as a global and put it anywhere, but I mean, that also might be anti-pattern, but you could pass it from wherever and just have it saved, um, to display, you know, say a, a score, a score display on a canvas. Yeah, Cuddly Zenny. Yeah. Like I said, you can word better than I can word. <laughs> but you have the fortune of um of you know pressing backspace. Dragon Spirit, I recommend it. I I, I am biased, but I recommend it. So, before I move on from, <laughs> I, I would definitely like some feedback on, on this. And, you know, looking at some of these levels, I know that they, what the heck was I thinking there? I told you I got kind of lazy uh, towards the end here. Um, why do I have acid going on to fire? I'm an idiot. Um, <laughs> yes. So I, you know, honestly, the night before I gave this talk, I was still, still tweaking some things. Um, a lot I am proud of and you know I know we're not actually no it wouldn't be um, I don't want that what slide is this this is 21 I have prize blocks and when um, the blocks pop, you know, it might even be easier just to Okay, so, so this whole section and Let's see, it's 21. Uh, it's just going to be easier for me to, to show it. So I have a section on what I've learned. Snow level? Of course you can suggest it. I don't know if I'm going to, if I'm going to be able to do it. I mean, I'm, I'm sure I'll be able to do it, but, uh, You know, the, the hard part about this is that 
it's difficult to edit the talk after it's done. I mean, I can edit my my speaker notes, no problem, but I, you know, going back and changing like the text, uh, I have to go into Google Docs or Google Slides, download or change the text there. Um, and then export the thing Speed running my presentation here. Speed running. Wait, you, you notice? Ooh, tetravalence. I like that. I really like that. You notice my my help me through hard times. I have empty liquor bottles. Fortunately, I didn't get into. I, I didn't start drinking. When I was in a deep depression, um, but I could have, I could have very, very easily. Uh, so uh, no, Dragon Spirit, no, because because <laughs> I was trying to make it funny. Wait, where the heck? Okay, here we go. So things, things like uh. This whole section is things that I've learned since I started streaming. I even did put Unity in there because I did, I did briefly look at Unity and I did briefly look at C Sharp, but I ended up, you know, sticking with Godot because I really liked it. All right, so where did it go? The atom icon is React. Uh, React JS. Because when I first started streaming, my, uh, like I mentioned towards the beginning of the, the stream, I am professionally, I'm a web dev. Uh, that's my that's my day job and <laughs> obviously you're not a golfer um and my 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 first you know few few months of streaming on my channel jd does dev i was doing web dev stuff and i felt like you know a, a rite of passage for anybody in the software and game development uh, category is to build your own Twitch bot, your own chat bot. So I was doing a lot of stuff in React uh, with that, and I did a lot of Node.js React integrating with the Twitch API, which you can do with Godot. You can set up uh, stream effects and, and, and overlay stuff with Godot. I call it the Godot overlay but you can laugh at me for that uh, later behind my back. So, so the, the mention of stars in the background. Now, could we do that with a shader? Now, I know that we could do it with particles. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Tetra. I mean, Alban, so when I started streaming, I mean, it's been... I think I had my affiliate anniversary in May. That's when I became affiliate on my on my channel, JD Does Dev. Um,
and I, I noticed that everybody, all the web developers, everybody was making their own chatbot. And, you know, every stream that I went into, people were, they had their own that they had built out. Um, stars could be shader, but particles might be easier option. I, I agree. What I was wanting to avoid is, um, covering the words. I mean, if we have it, have it in or behind the words, or at least appear to be behind the words. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I was thinking that with a shader, we might be able to do like a if color is this, then then don't show. So let's let's take a look at um here we go. Now if you don't know this site, if you don't know the site, then then you should. GodotShaders.com. I've been diving into the world of shaders a little bit. Uh, I've been trying to learn, you know, wrap my head. And last night, last night actually helped out a lot because on, on my stream, we did that little wavy effect on, um, on some of the liquids. And figuring that out helped out a ton. So let's see. Pixel star. SOS dev help. How's it going? Welcome in. Okay, we want to look for canvas items. Shaders are are just da. Ah. Hey, that's a canvas item. Like like this. I see this number. Maybe not this one exactly, but this number here, um, this 12.9898 are very similar very frequently in the random. So Let's copy this and let's let's play with it a little bit here. Now what I'm gonna do is on the world. Why did I do that? Um gonna add in a color rect. Boom. Boom. And now, material, new shader material. Um, stars create. Now let's look at this. Did that get changed something? Because that's the second time that I, I've run into that specific. Vec4.
I thought that it had, um, that there were, that there was autocomplete for hints. Any comments on this one? Um, nope, it's been it's been a while. All right, so uh, Godot shader. So let's let's check it out. Shading language. Um, built-in variables. No, uh, I wanted, actually I wanted this item. Don't need that. What I want is the hints. So where, where would, um, hints be? Uniforms. Here we go. Hopefully here, maybe. Um, It's not hint color, it's source color. Okay. Right? Hint range. There we go. Like for source color. All right. There we go. So where where did we where did we leave off? Right there. All right, check that out. Whoa. It's actually really cool. Now because this background color is a source color and it's a uniform, we should be able to that if I make it all, all right if I make it all there it's adding in background color which is going to be plus zero so we almost need another fragment to to make the background clear um is background color used anywhere anywhere else One thing I don't like that I don't like about shaders is debugging them. Because it's very, very hard to figure out, you know, where something is going wrong, if at all. Um, if star value probability is greater than probability, let's see if we can figure this out. You know, it's really fun sometimes that, that I like to do, um, is use chat GPT. And make it weird. Um... And what I mean by that is, is have it explain things to me. I'm not a fan of using ChatGPT 
for uh to to write code i am a fan of having chat gpt help me understand code i'm also a fan of having chat gpt abuse me verbally because that makes it really fun when when it insults me dr revert welcome back um what i'm trying to accomplish here what i'd like to achieve is I would like for the background color. Actually, maybe. Let's just see what happens when I take that out. Nothing, absolutely nothing. OK. Um, I would like for if if it's black. If it's if there's nothing there for the color to be um, transparent. Hail Dyer, yes, exactly, exactly. So that that's what I'm looking trying to find here. So it's getting the the background color. I got it. Um, and yeah, the alpha is set here. And I'm trying to figure out which one of these is the actual. The actual. Uh, yeah, I see that, Dr. Revert. I definitely see that. Um, Before I change it, because if I change it here. If I set it to zero, then everything goes away, right? I mean, and that makes sense too. So I'm trying to find out where the star, which, which one of these functions is the star. Um, so star value is random position. Probability is there. So it's going to, um, You're a genius, Dr. Revert. You're a genius. I would have gotten there eventually, but you got me there quicker. No colors effect four. Color R, color G, color B, and color A are floats. But colors effect four. Oh. Huh, interesting. I wonder if it's just taking the same value, oh, Jesus. Taking the same value three times or four times. You see, that's that's a thing. I can't really. I don't. Well, might be able to, but I don't know how to debug this. Uh, to to find out. Like, how would I? Hell dire. Okay. <laughs> they both came at the same time. Thank you both. Okay. Shaders are magic. Shaders are just magic. So now let's see. Um. The size. What does the size affect?
and probability will put this up to 0.95 so that's frequent but they're still in front of the letters so what i'm wondering here is oh no i wouldn't do it there i wouldn't do it there is uniform Sampler 2D. Okay. Dr. Rover, yeah, 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 exactly. I, I understand why it's in front. I'm just wondering if I can if I can correct it. And Hail Dyer, I'm I'm wondering if that's something that can be corrected um through through the magic of shader. Uh so sampler 2D. Now I want to see what how I used it before in, in this. Sampler 2D. Ah, Dr. Revert, but you missed the part where I said I like to do things difficult. <laughs> um, because, because there is no changing order of nodes here. Each one of these slides was made in, in uh, Google Slides and exported as a PNG. So the text is part of the background image. Everything here came from Google Slides. So what I would like to do but Z order isn't going to isn't going to do anything. It'll Z order will let me put it behind the 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 tiles here, the tile map, but not behind the text because the text exists on the background. Elanir, welcome in. It's good to see you. But I do appreciate the help. I do appreciate the 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 way you're thinking. Yeah, uh Hildire, that's kind of what I was going for. That's what I was hoping to to figure out here. So but I'm not quite sure how to use well, where's how how to use the the screen texture because I know we're getting it. We're seeing everything back here, right? We're we're seeing it that's what um screen texture does, right? It it reads everything that is behind the color rect, if I understand correctly. So, this is where my knowledge starts to run out significantly. Um, only one there uh okay so QD textures are red as float I think oh I think I think I got it I think I got it here um it's gonna be the the current UV right I just don't know what what things are. What things are um 
how to get that from the sampler 2d is texture and texture is float it or it textures which are red as float so let's look at canvas item shaders already well thank you thank you tomorrow is going to be an interesting stream on my channel um we're actually probably going to be playing minecraft with friend of the stream beegs b3 a g z Oh, wait, 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 wait. Um, okay. Let's look. Um, Texture, function texture. <laughs> Tetra. for screen texture back to two chords screen UV dot Okay, let's undo that. Um, Okay, okay, hold on. Let's see here. Um now the easiest way to get the the background color here. First we have to comment this crap out I've thrown errors
Okay, now what is the Oh no, current color is coming back as a, well, it's going to be floats, but. Dang it. So this is what. Hail Dyer, we're, we're on the same page here. We're on the same page because that's what I was trying to get to. Um, so I've got 0 0.5, 0 0.05, 0 0.14. Heck. Four. Zero point zero five. Dang it. Point one four, point two. Okay. Now. Distance. Current color. Default background color is less than now let's change this back to that boom check this out check it out Stefan, welcome in. Stefan5. It's good to see you. Yep, this works as well. Either way, it's working. It's working. No, it did. So the problem was that um, it just didn't have or didn't convert the, the VEC3 in here. I needed to just put in RGB. It's a little thing, but... Yeah, exactly. But we figured it out. We figured it out, friends. Awesome job. And thank you all for the help on that. I think that this little bit of juice and maybe we can.
At least this didn't yell at me. There. I'm not a wizard. You're a wizard. So this, this random number... I, I'm curious about how that works, or what if that's just generating a noise? Because that seems like what it is to me. Um, that looks so cool, folks. This looks so cool. Ole Kongen, welcome. Um, right now we're working on a shader for my talk. So I'm giving a talk next month, actually in about two weeks. And save the file. Then here, here's what we do. Here's, here's how this is going to work. The presenter. Nope, nope. camera is going to follow. Now what we... Oh, no, we can't do it with canvas. No! But we could, we can... Make some changes. Um, what I'm thinking here, what I'm thinking, it is getting a little bit very, very complicated, more complicated than 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 I want it to be. But let's take a look and see, just see how it looks. All right, now that we got this, this shader here. Oh, oh. Look how beautiful this is. Oh, oh, I missed it. Come on, go back down, go back down. Here we go. What do you mean by soft lock, Dr. Revert? Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't understand that. What you mean by that? Oh, no, the platform, I have it set up so that it, it gives me enough time so that I can demonstrate it, give people a chance to laugh for a bit, and then jump off. And Hail Dyer, I, I haven't put that one back on. So we didn't lose it, I just hid the color rec that I was using. So, so fake me pops up, waits for a couple seconds, has a booger in the, in, in my nose. Look at that star, just, just boogieing it out. That is so cool. I mean, shaders are, shaders are something. All right, I need to take a really quick break. Um, but been going so, oh, for over an hour since the last one. So if you'll excuse me for like three, two, three minutes, I'll be right back. Um, 
And then, you know, before before we wrap up for the day, because I only have about 40, 47 minutes left, give or take, uh, before, you know, my end time is supposed to happen. Uh, I do want to I want to show off some some really cool non game Godot things. So I'll be back in a couple minutes and then then we'll check that out. Thank you. Thank you all so much for for being here, for hanging out. I really appreciate it. I'll be right back. All right, friends, we're back. Thank you all for hanging out. Let me turn the music down a little bit. And yes, this is stream safe music. So, so you shouldn't be getting silenced. Well, the VOD won't, shouldn't be getting any problems. Um, the VOD won't get the music because of the way that I have things set up. All right, let's stop that. So, like I said, we're we're gonna look at some some really cool non-game projects that that I found. Um, and the first one, if you haven't used this yet, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend that you do check it out. Is Material Maker. So this this app uh bully kongan this app is going to install a virus i'm kidding it won't i've run it before um i've been doing dev professionally for over 10 years as far as game dev i i only got into game dev about october of last year and i've been messing around with quite a few different things um in the process just trying to trying to learn things. So Material Maker here is a lot like Blender. 
blenders nodes or the shader nodes, visual shader in Godot. Where you can make, it does what it says on the tin, making materials. And there's even like a brick maker here, which I think is really cool. Um, so let's. So I haven't done a lot with this, but the other really cool thing about it is um, you can get stuff from the website on it. And, but I mean, looking at this, just in general, this is, this is Godot. This is made with a game engine. There's so many things we can do that aren't, aren't just games. What's going on here? Clipboard cannot be pasted. Yep, that's fine. Now, loading from the website does take a little bit, if I remember correctly. And I do have an updated version. Oh, oh. Failed to connect to the website. Oh, well. Outstanding. I'm trying to show off here. Come on, computer, work. And that that's awesome. Oh, here we go. Now it's now it's loading. It takes a little bit though. It takes just a little bit of time for everything to load up. Um But one of the things I really do like is it tells the license when you hover over it. Like I said, it takes a bit for, for everything to, to load up, but I mean, come on, look at that. Oh, oh, it got my alien circuitry first. And look, it's, it's, you know, all the, just. Where the heck did everything go here? I mean, I, I think this stuff is phenomenal. I, I think that this is like some of the coolest use for, for a game engine is, is to make non-game things. Um, if more have loaded up or have been cached. Uh, Pandon, what, what kind of apps have you made? Meow Mew Lemieux, what is up? Welcome in.
Now there is there is a website with this. Um, so I was just kind of looking at that, trying to materialmaker.org. Oh, I've already got it open. How about that? Um, and when the thing. And on that is awesome. That is so cool. So when the material maker connection works, then hold on. Um, then you can select stuff from here, hit download, and it'll automatically like get pulled to your your local. And I love that. I love that about this. Look at this stuff that that we can just you know pop into Material Maker as a PTEX file, and it it works. So that that's one of them that that has like, has my attention. Now, many of you may not know, probably most of you don't, but I am a musician. I occasionally play saxophone on my stream. Very rarely, though. Um, if the community demands it, then I'll do it. Um... But I also like making music. And this was introduced to me, I think, by uh, another friend of the stream. And it is called Oska Sea Oil or something like that. And what is this? It's amazing. That's what it is. I'm going to pause here. It is a, a, a thing to make music made in Godot. It's, it's music box, it's box in Irish. Cool. And, and, and check it out, all these instruments in here. And yes, it's made in, in Gido, and I, I'm afraid that this might end up really loud. Ooh, no. Go back to the arrangement here. Um, yeah, that that's that's something something else that that I found uh, as something made with Godot that isn't a game.
so like like i i'm, I'm excited about things that that other people have made that are are One second. Yeah, um, game engines are so powerful. Here, here's another one that is like. You got to see to believe. <laughs> Dad, I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> Um, this is Godot OS. <laughs> no, I was gonna say I just that that I'm holding in a a, a burp. <laughs> That's right, a simulated operating system built in Godot with games inside it. And text editor. <laughs> Give me another die. Yeah, it is a such a tempting. I have an OS running in my browser. There, there's not a lot to it, and the the video, the trailer, shows a lot more. I I suggest if if you like this, watch the video to see see what it does. It's so cool. All right. Let me see if I have this other one. Well, I know I have it because I just... Uh, I just have to find where it is and I don't want to... I don't want to... show all the files that I have in my... um... in my download folder. It's embarrassing. I have too many. Thanks, Elbon. I, I I really, really like it. Check this out. Now, if you watch or read the Godot blog, which you should, this was on a recent post as a featured app. It is a Godot-based pixel art. Tool. I'm not a pixel, well, any kind of artist, honestly. But yeah, pixel, pixel o rama, pixel o rama. Uh, it mods, if any of you want to put the the um the link to it if you know it if you have it um let's see now i haven't done a lot with this 
I I I I'm more prone to using um a sprite. Oh, there it is. There's that, that list that I was looking for. Um, select clear. But I mean, why is it selecting though? Oh, it's because I have select on. Um, yeah. I don't know why I chose this color, but uh I did. Now, this is one of the killer things. You can't even see it here. What the heck? One of the things I really like about the, the other main thing, main pixel art thing. Oh, oh. Shading tool doesn't need to be that big. Is a shading tool. Oh, Captain Coder, welcome in. Welcome in. Uh, Pandin, it is technically free, but you can. You can um, support the, the developer. On, uh, I think. Yeah, Pixelorama. So. It's something you could run in browser if you want to download it. And if you can, you know, I suggest, you know, pitching in a bit. If you can, if you can. All right, so I saw the link. Let's let, let's open up. non-game open source projects um i really like max game template it, that's not really a project but uh another one in the list of suggest oh, oh oh where am i going where am i going what am i clicking um What about this one? Has anybody tried RPG in a box? Check this out. Now, I'm not going to purchase it because I... I don't have them. Uh, I don't really use stuff like this a lot, but I mean, oh, loud. It's so cool. I just imagine some of the stuff that you can. You can do with this. Let's let's there. There we go. The project templates, nice little isometric look down. Voxel editor. I mean, the, so many amazing, amazing things done, done like this. Then, oh, here we go. And then of course, you know, now that we're now that we're winding down, I'm only gonna be going for about another 20 minutes or so. Close that window. Of course. I 
I, I'd be, I'd be doing you a disservice to not show off a little bit of the good overlay. So this version of my good overlay is a work in progress. There's a lot of stuff in it that I, I'm not using yet. There's a lot of stuff that I am using. Note clip, yes. I do stream on my own channel, JD Does Dev, um, six days a week, five to six days a week. Sometimes I take I take some me time. Um, but there there's a new meta on Twitch, and it is making that overlay with the game engine. That's right. Oh, thank you for the shout out. Making, making yourself, putting yourself in the game. And for those of you who watched Foolbox's stream the other day, I want to make it very clear here. It's not Fool's Box, okay? Not Fool Box. Temptic, thank you. Take care. So let's see if I can get this. I need to see which one of my, my cams I have that on. Please, nope, cancel. I've lost all my, I've lost my. My camera sources. Ah, there we go. Look, that's a me. That's a me. In the game. So there's a lot that can be done, but I'm not using th this fancy, this, all this stuff just yet. Um, What I do have, Soul Labyrinth. So it, it, it's it been being done a couple different ways. This is actually, it is a Sprite to, uh, sprite 3D. The texture is a spout texture, which is an add-on. Um, and spout is software that uh, there's an, a plugin for OBS that takes takes your image and just sprays it all over um, to anything that'll that'll accept it. So I've got this coming from Spout, and then I also have um. You want to see some real Inception. Let me see what this one is. Okay. That, for that. That's Sprite 3D. There we go. So now, now we have the, the screen. Oh no, I lost my wheels. How could you let that happen? I'm sure. Fox Hollow Games, welcome in. Good to see you. 
Now, if you really want to get get funny with it. Oh, no, animation. But as far as my <laughs> still going, uh, making it loop, loop a de loop. Um, let's not save that. So I've been working on the the chat messages for my channel, but I do want to show. Uh, yeah, I I I have it hooked into Streamerbot. Streamerbot is um. Well, you've seen me open it a couple times here, but it's used for for creating stream effects and queuing things up. So it's pretty cool. Um, you know, I can I have a lot of my my on stream effects are are here. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna open up my my local version. That's not it. And so, well, yeah, I can show it here. So it uses a, a window with a transparent background, and I have this as my... Well, thank you for the follow. <laughs> so it's hooked into my my stream. Through streamer bot. So that follow actually came from my stream. So Littlewood, thank you for thank you for the follow over there. Um but there there's so many really cool things. And I in the next iteration of it, I'm I'm working on put using the heat um Twitch extension. And making it so that people can click on my face and have things appear. So we've we've tested it out a couple times in my chat. Yifweed, welcome in. It's very good to see you. Yeah, we've tested it out a few times on my chat. Um, and the results were, as you might expect, my face got covered almost immediately. Uh, but it was fun. So I also have a really, really, really fun. Oh, I don't think that I can. I'm going to try to trigger it. I'm going to try to trigger it. Um, my raid alert when I get raided on my channel. See if this works. I, I don't know if it will, but let's see. No, I've probably got an error that you can't raid yourself. Um, so let's see. Uh, hey, insert rating streamer's name here. Thank you for the raid. This is my raid alert. How did insert last activity here go? Now, let's rock. I am so sorry to the create to the person who made the Godot plushie. But I have I have bastardized it for the purposes of making a funny animation when raiders come into my stream. And this is all coming from Godot. You know, plus streamer bot. <laughs> that was the reaction I was looking for. <laughs> now, I did open source the um, Captain Dance. I was thinking about fixing that, but it just adds so much to it. It adds so much to the 
to the experience, to the jankiness of it that 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 I bring that I bring to Twitch. Um. Let's see, I think I have it. GitHub. I think I post this in chat as well, um, because this. This is a get over day, get overlay starter kit. Uh, very simple. If you use streamer bot. This hooks directly into the WebSocket API. Um, so instead of I mean, there are a lot of other really, really good things out there. Like if we look. Um, Twitcher by Connie, I, I think Connie did a, a takeover before, right? Um, but Twitcher is amazing. I I used in my first iteration, I used um, Gift, but I had to do so much work to get it to to work that uh, you know, I decided that for V two for for the the next this current version, I I don't want to use. I don't want to directly hook into Twitch and it's nothing against the, the developers of these add-ons. It's the Twitch API is rough. Excuse me, a little bit difficult to, to, to hook into. So I am hooking into a streamer bot, which is a, you know, a, a, a regular chat bot, very powerful for those of you who like to do C sharp and Godot, you can write your own C sharp scripts in here. Um, to, to do different effects. And it has its own WebSocket server. So to show you how I, I did that, um, where? Using Godot's WebSocket, anytime that there's an event, we, we hook into StreamerBot's WebSocket URL, connect in there, and then I can have all kinds of different, pretty much anything that, that can happen on Twitch or outside of Twitch. You see, I've got Kofi. Um, pause to let that, to let it sink in. Um, if a Kofi event happens, <coughs> uh, then then it I can get the info from it. If a fourth wall event happens, I can get the info. Any Twitch events, I can get the info for it. Um, and I can subscribe to subscribe in the WebSocket sense to just about anything. And I've got all of the events here in a dictionary. And you can see I can I can react to almost anything that could happen here. And it it's I think it's amazing. And you know, you could use it for for credits. I have a credit scene that that I run as well at the end of my stream when I remember to. But that's just another thing. So I I'm supposed to be done in about eight minutes. I wanna I wanna open up. You know, if anybody has any questions before we raid out, because we're gonna start looking for a raider a, a raid target here very quickly. So if anybody has any things you want to. Oh, I appreciate that. Um, but I've been talking a lot and I need to take a few, few, few steps. So I'm definitely not feeling stressed. This has been absolutely amazing. So. Yeah, if anybody has any, any thoughts, any. Concerns, comments. I'm going to turn off the good overlay so that we don't get any notifications from my stream. Uh, but yeah, I, I've been having a really great time doing this. Um, Nat, if you, if you have an idea for a raid target, whenever, uh, I did. Uh, 
Elbon, awesome. I'm I'm glad to hear that. I I again I can't stress enough how much I love open source software and open source communities as well. I mean, you know, you don't get this from from the big the big rich companies. You you get you get this kind of community from things that are built by a community and where everything is shared. And Godot has one of the best community managers that I've ever met. Um, maybe second only to the Drupal <clears throat> community, but that is only because I am, I am, uh, I get paid to do Drupal. No, Solar, thank you. Thank you for modding. And your job is to be an amazing person and you do it well. So shut up. Mods, mods, somebody time out Godot Engine official. Wait. Thank you to all the mods who have been here hanging out. Thank you to everybody. Um. Yeah, the mods are amazing. I don't know if there were any, any, like, as our friend Science Streams says, schmellies um, coming through. But if there were, I didn't see them. Y'all did amazing. So, I, I, I got nothing. <laughs> Foss is the way. This is the way. Foss is the way. I got nothing more. Um, I was just saying, you'll notice, Godot official, you have a very special symbol next to you in chat. You'll notice, you'll notice there is a, a VIP there for you. 